Mr. President, I have always been a very strong proponent of family planning programs and of measures to promote and protect women's health. Like many Americans, however, I was very concerned in January when the Department of Health and Human Services issued a final regulation to require religious universities, hospitals, charities, and other faith-based organizations to pay for health insurance that covers contraceptives and sterilizations regardless of the organization's religious beliefs. I believe that such a mandate poses a threat to our religious freedom and presents the Catholic Church and other faith-based organizations with an impossible choice between violating their religious beliefs or violating federal regulations. In February, President Obama announced what he termed an accommodation that would require insurance companies rather than religious organizations to provide these services. But as I read the details of that accommodation, it became very clear to me that many parts of the plan remained unclear. A key issue, for example, revolves around self-insured religious-based organizations. There are many Catholic hospitals and universities that are self-insured and thus act as both the employer and the insurer. A very important issue is how the rule would treat these self-insured faith-based organizations. But the rule was totally unclear. It said that the department would just continue to work with, with non-exempted, non-profit religious organizations. So in an attempt to clarify this critical issue, I sent a letter to Secretary Sebelius asking for specific clarification on how faith-based organizations that are self-insured and thus act as both the insurer and the employer would be treated. Would they have their rights of conscience protected? This was not a complicated question. It was a very straightforward question. And frankly, the answer to the question was going to determine my vote on this very important amendment. Sadly, the administration once again skirted the answer. In her response, Secretary Sebelius simply said that the president is, quote, committed to rulemaking to ensure access to these important preventive services and fully insured and self-insured group health plans while further accommodating religious organizations' beliefs, end quote. What does that mean, Mr. President? And I would ask unanimous consent that both my letter to Secretary Sebelius and her reply be put in the record at the conclusion of my remarks. Uh, without objection. This was very frustrating to me. I asked a key question and I could not get a straight answer. It also demonstrates many of the problems associated with the employer mandates. I also think this is a sad I would ask permission to have two additional amendments. So objection. Two additional amendments. So ordered. Thank you. I believe that the sponsor of this amendment is completely sincere, and I want to make that clear. But this issue has become a sad example of election year politics. I believe that a good compromise could have been reached and should have been worked out. For example, in Maine, state law requiring contraception co coverage 
includes a specific exemption for religious employers, such as churches, schools, and hospitals. Surely we could have reached a similar accommodation. And unfortunately, what we're left with is an issue that's important and that too many people, including this administration, are playing politics with. Since I could not and did not receive a straightforward answer to my question about protecting self-insured faith-based organizations, I feel that I have to vote for Senator Blunt's amendment with the hope that its scope will be further narrowed and refined as the legislative process proceeds and recognizing that state laws will not be preempted. I do this with, with a lot of conflict because I think the amendment does have its flaws, but when the administration cannot even assure me that self-insured, faith-based organizations, religious freedoms are protected, I feel I have no, no choice. I hope that the amendment will be refined, and I also hope that the Senate will move forward to address the many important pressing issues facing our nation and stop engaging in what is clearly an election year ploy. Thank you, Mr. President.